Hey there, I'm Eric and in this video we're going to be putting on a BBS HD Bifang motor onto a Truck Marlin 7. First thing I'm going to want to do is take off the pedals here. The one on the dry side here is just, if you're looking at it, it's real basic. It's lefty-loosey. Now some bikes you may need Allen wrench, uh, others you may need straight wrench, the flat one to go in there and take them off. Some have both styles on. Now the one on the other side, you're going to want to go righty loosey for that one. Now we're going to want to begin to start taking off the whole crank arms here. So this side should be, once again, lefty loosey. All right, and then you go over onto this side and the bolts for the arms on this will be, it's just lefty loosey for this one, it's just a normal bolt. This kit actually came with a crank arm puller. It all don't, you pretty much have to read what the extras are with each each kit. Pretty much the way this works is screw down this part here. You're going to want to get it quite a bit in. You don't want just a couple threads. Just screw it all the way in. Now I just take my wrench here, go ahead and put it in there, and we're going to tighten it. And that's going to back it off the bike. <laughs> Had to find a bigger wrench. Wasn't going to knock that leverage off that. Let's try to see if this one works a little bit better. I had to start out with uh, pounding it from the back side here to get it to loosen up. I was using the tool quite a bit. It was just, it was just locking up on. But yeah, it's got it, got it pretty loose. Pretty much all, all you really want to do is you, you want to get onto the tool and the other one and you really got to put some lump into it. <laughs> got the one side and now I just got to do the other. This part just threads into it. And then when you're tightening it, pushes out kind of like a piston there and Slowly separates, it gets it loose, but yeah, you're either gonna want to use a rubber mallet, preferably so you don't do any damage, or if you don't have one of those, just I guess go ahead and take a hammer to it. Get your own discretion. So now I'm gonna get off this one. This one is a little bit tougher. I'm gonna start by giving it a little bit of a pound here. You just got a pounder, just pound it real, real hard, like right there. <laughs> That's just smut, I tell you, smut. <laughs> It helps to test it a couple times while you're doing it. Ta -da! All right, now I'm gonna remove the bottom bracket. I need to flip it around to the non-dry side first. And you're gonna need one of these tools. I don't know what it's called. I'll put it down in the description below. Okay, now that I got the non-dry side off, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the dry side. This is another one of those things that has uh, reverse threads on it. So, righty loosey. And now we can pull the whole bottom bracket out. Okay, at this point, we're ready to do a dry fit to the frame, see how everything fits in here. Pretty much, we just put it right there and just slide it right into that hole there. Add a couple of these uh, washers into it and Hopefully that keeps it from resting up against the frame there. Looking at the chain ring now, I can tell I should not have downgraded to the 36 uh, tooth on this one. I should have stayed on the 42 tooth chain ring. Because yeah, my chain line is going to be definitely going to be off there. The normal one would have, would have set it back here, which would have been definitely better. So yeah, I have one on order coming, which will fix this. I'm just going to get it all hooked up and see how it is. I Okay, now I'm gonna to wanna to install this piece with the, it has like little teeth in it and those I'm gonna want facing towards the bike. That's supposed to help it keep from rotating. All right, so I gotta basically prepare it like that with all the washers on it. And they'll crunch down if they need to compress at all. Now that I've done the dry fit with it, basically I'm gonna add a little bit of thread locker to it. I'm gonna let that thread locker dry on there for a while. A lot of people don't uh, follow that step they put it on and just go to town, but I'm gonna give it a few minutes to dry on it. And that should help prevent any kind of vibrations or anything from that coming loose. Hopefully yeah, that's the idea. No, it, it, it should definitely work. A good amount of torque and thread lock on there. Everything should hold tight. I'm also gonna apply thread lock around here to where the uh, it ends up clamping down to at least a few millimeters off from the bottom bracket there. I'm also going to thread lock the bolts for the screen. Just be safe. Okay, now that the thread lock's dried a bit, I'm going to start putting things together here. I'm going to put a little tool on here and then actually put some torque down on it. Now I got it quite a bit tight on there. 
I'm going to go ahead and add some extra torque to it using a rubber mallet here. And that's about it for this bike. I can't actually add on the next ring. There's not, I don't think, I believe there's not enough threads. I don't know. Let's try. Let's find out. Um, I was wrong. I right, can just add this outer, outer ring onto it. So I'm going to go ahead and put that onto it. And this one is made out of aluminum, so I'm not going to actually use a mallet on it. It's just here to <clears throat> keep the other one in its place. Now, before I put the pedal on, I'm going to go ahead and bolt the chain ring on using the five provided nuts. Of course, later I'll be getting that, the 42 tooth back to try to correct that, but I can already tell it's going to be a chain line issue for uh, some of the higher gears. So I'll have two different chain rings to mess around with the 36 here and then a 42. I'm going to boot. I'm going to go ahead and bolt this in. They already got thread lock on these. Looks like they actually provided me with one extra little bolt there. That was nice of them. It's better than the alternative where you find yourself one short. Now they got that loosely on there. I'm going to go ahead and tighten them into a star pattern here. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put the chain back onto the chain ring. Just to kind of assist in tightening everything up. <laughs> Had to put the chain on to uh, try to get a little bit more torque down on these bolts. Now we can go ahead and stick the other pedal on, just making sure it's facing the opposite direction. Unless you want to go in the same direction, we pedaling a little funny. And now I can stick the pedals back on. Wow, that was pretty lucky. I just guessed which pedal was which and got them right. Can't get it wrong, they, uh, one has opposite threads on it. Yeah, I could get it to shift into all of them. Uh, it went into the lowest gear, but then the chain ring went ahead and threw the chain off of it. It's a really skewed angle there, but it should be enough to test while I wait for the bar to come. So yeah, I'm weighing on a 42-2 chain ring, and then I already have actually another chain, because this one, that's pulled pretty tight there to get to that gear. So when I go up to anything like a 42, yeah, I'm definitely gonna need more chain length. So. I went ahead and got, got me another chain. Now I'm gonna install the speed sensor first. This little guy attaches to one of the back spokes. All right, so this goes on with a simple screw. Yeah, well, it's not actually a screw. It's a, I don't know what you call these. Okay, now I got the speed sensor. I'm gonna put a couple of zip ties to the back of it and find a good place for it. All right, and then I'm just gonna take off the little sticky back and it looks like I'm gonna get the most Central clearance right about there. Also, while I'm at it, tight down a little adjustment screw. Okay, that should work. And now I'm just going to tighten up my zip ties here. And I'll basically clip those off later. Then you just pretty much line up your magnet sensor to where really close to it, but not actually hitting it. Since I don't actually have a driver for this one, I'm going to use my needle nose pliers. Then I'm going to take the speed sensor wire, which I'll end up find a way to clean these up up under here but you screw that into that post there and hence you got a speed sensor and basically that cable will only go in one way it's got a flat side on it okay now i'm going to install the gear shift sensor that basically goes on well the back gear cable there so i'm going to take off the end ferrule and put this on right off but yeah no, don't cut your wire or anything to get those off just use the needle nose pliers and uncrimp them all right, now I think I'm gonna shift into probably the littlest gear would probably be the easiest for this, for the highest gear, I guess. Just gonna mark this out real quick. So where roughly everything should be. So I got my rough blank there. There's little indentations, uh, I'm gonna subtract uh, just a little bit from each one. I'm just gonna eyeball it, so uh, it's gotta be probably really, really probably right, right about there is what I need to cut off the cable. Or not the cable, but the uh, cable housing. Okay, 
Pull that off there. Remove these zip ties here, which I'll just replace later. That one's not a zip tie, it's some kind of weird. And, uh, oh, there it went. <laughs> and now the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is, before I start to cut anything, is of course remove my wire out of there. So now I'm gonna cut the housing on these internal marks I made, one's right there, another one right there, and that should give me my cut. There is a special tool for these, but I don't have them, so I'll have to reopen up the hole on the bottom side after I do it. I <laughs> find my uh, little bolt cutters I was gonna go and grab to do this. So grab the oversized ones. That'll, that'll do it. Yep, took care of that real quick. And now I just gotta make sure I reopen up the little hole on the end. Just get it got it collapsed at all. Not too bad. This one anyways. And the same thing on the uh, other end. Now I just gotta stick it in the hole here. After a few attempts and snagging some wires, I found out the easiest way to get it on is to actually uh, rotate it on. That way you're going with the uh, strands of the wires. Worked out pretty good then. So I'll slide that all the way back there. And now got our next sheath I gotta put on. Nice. Now the gear shift sensor is hooked up. Just bait, pretty much gotta plug it into that one there. And then she's hooked up, clean up the wires and hook my derailleur back up. And of course, I just add a couple zip ties here just to keep everything real taut. Okay, nice. Okay, with everything roughly zip tied up there, I haven't clipped yet. I'll come back to that and clip them at the end. I'm going to flip it over and install everything that goes on the handlebars. I think the screen looks pretty good right there. So I'm going to screw it down real quick and also do the little uh, controller over here. Okay, now I'm going to throw the harness cable on there real quick just to test it out. Make sure everything's going all right. And with the uh, basic throttle on so I can actually test the motor out. Just give it a little test. Got a little uh, replacement throttle for it. It's a little bit better. It's a little half twist. So uh, for the left hand side, I didn't have quite enough clearance over here for it. And I also didn't want to have my gear shifting and my throttle on one side. So I decided to be a little bit weird and put it on the left. It shouldn't be much to get used to. I mean, really. Only thing was is the ones I found didn't have open bar ends. Uh, I already got the one installed here. What I did, so I don't know what size hole saw this is, but I got a hole saw just the size of the handlebars. And it's already got the hole, which gives you a nice starting point. So you put, I can put that in there and I basically just drill her out. So yeah, you just pretty much just take it and then drill it out. You just hold it as steady as you can. And just like that, she's drilled out. So now I can push it all the way on and beyond to get my bar ends on. So I'm gonna install that throttle real quick after I take all the bar ends and everything off of it. Okay, the next thing to do, since I have hydraulic brakes on this bike, I didn't want to replace it. So what you get is you get sensors that work off a uh, magnet. So when it's close, it sees that it's not breaking. When it's going away, it sees that it is breaking. On the truck here, pretty much the only spot to stick it in would be to have the magnet there and have this tilted up at an angle like that and then that seems to work pretty good there from any of the tests I did. The whole trick is going to be to get it to stick. Made us end up using a gobbed worth of JV weld there and uh, just kind of fill it in to get it to stick. Uh, to be continued. Okay, got a JV welded in real good. Basically just taped it up there, put a little bottom on and just kind of shoved JV weld in there until I could make it like almost look like a flat surface. So I'm going to let that dry for a bit. Okay, didn't come out too bad looking. Nah, not too bad. So basically I'll end up hiding the wire down along like that. For the next step, definitely gonna want to turn on the screen. And then I'm gonna start with one side at a time. So yeah, I gotta unplug the one. And now I can see on the screen anytime if that little brake sensor's on that the magnet's not near. So I'm basically positioning the magnet as close as I can to the thing to get the thing to just engage the brakes. Really what I want an optimal positioning for this thing is for the brakes to come on when I just 
barely tap this. I'm gonna play around with the magnet and find a good position for that, and then I'm gonna JV weld it to the, also to the hand. I'm gonna also JV weld it to then to the bike. And this is just for those people like uh, Brent that <laughs> want to quote the wall constantly at me. Here you go. This is for uh, anybody looking at the motor. They'll think the BBS01 250 watt. <laughs> I think they would try to get that a little bit closer in reality, but whatever. Yeah, they're all about the same size. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick this right on here. Aren't you good to go? All I got to really do is take my uh, wire harness here, kind of clean it up, probably go up and under there, and then I'll bungee all these wires up and under and hide them real good. Okay, pretty much the only thing I need to do before I go and give it a test ride is, well, one, I gotta wait for the sun to come up. So the other thing I'll do in the, on another video is I'll end up shortening this cable. I wanna have internal routing so that the cable will end up going, coming out there and then coming out the bottom. I'm gonna give it a quick test ride. I'm gonna give it a, I guess a speed test and I'm also gonna do a hill climb. I can't use the lowest gear, but I should be able to get a good indication how much stronger than it is than my old hub motor all right all geared up got my helmet on got the backpack on which i got the battery in just in case anybody's wondering how i'm powering this guy so yeah so i pretty much just put the battery into the backpack and i just have that power cord hanging off of it and plug it into the bike all right let's see what this girl can really do Try this hill. Oh. <laughs> like it was nothing. Nice, I made it to the end of uh, New River Trail here. Definitely have to say, I definitely like the mid-drive over the hub motor much better for multiple reasons. It gives you a better center of balance. You can easily change your wheel and your tire without having to deal with all the mess of a hub motor. Um, the torque and power is unbelievable going up hills. I, you have your whole gear set. And it doesn't resist you when you stop pedaling, so you actually glide along a lot smoother. So it's more efficient even than the hub motor with regen, in my opinion. At least the hub motor that I had from CSC. So if you guys are looking to get into these Bifang motors, uh, I've got a bunch of links down below. I've got a thousand watt, which that's actually considered illegal in some areas. People like Brent wouldn't like it, but... <laughs> I also have listed there the 750 watts and 500 watts also, which is uh, the BBS-02 and the BBS-01. Uh, both very good systems. I just wanted the 1,000 watts because, well, I actually plan on uh, probably redoing some of my tours. <laughs> Getting revenge, as I could say, with, a, with the electric bike. Anyways, thanks for watching, and try to have a good day. Oh, don't be a Brent.